I just had the craziest thing happen to me and I was like, wow. And what I learned in this is that we are created for more. And today's show is you are created for more. And I just want to share you what happened to me. I drove, drove to Southern California. It was about an eight and a half hour drive. And I really first didn't really want to go because I had so much going on at home, but I chose to just go for it, needed to do it. I was excited about filming six shows in one day. We are traveling. I was traveling by myself, worshiping God, talking to God, uh, speaking in my prayer language, just having a blast. And Holy Spirit is showing me at one of those moments and says, see everything you can see in other people. So I was looking at people while we were driving, not too much. And as I'm driving, I am just speaking life into people and seeing them as I think the way God is seeing them that moment. And it was just amazing. You, you saw them in their full potential and it was exciting. Little did I realize that I was being prepared for what was coming that night. Because the hotel that I had booked, which was a three and a half star hotel with, with a great name on it, when I arrived, the name had been changed to something that was very different, more like a type of hotel. And I, I was kind of surprised. And when I walked into this hotel, I was like, what happened? Oh, they said, oh, we were going to change the name, but we chose not to. We chose to keep the hotel we have because I said, well, it says it has a full breakfast here online. They said, oh yeah, not really. You know, you kind of know what is going on there. And then I walked in the room. It was late. I was tired. I had driven eight and a half hours that day. And I walked in the room and the first appearance, everything looked so charming till I took a step further. It was the last room available. It's, it's the smoke odor hit me. There was live wires laying on the grind, a ground exposed. The sink had old chips in it. And when I walked in that room, the shower curtain was completely yellow. And it was like, oh my goodness. And then I could not even do anything in that bathroom except for grab some water and step out because the smoke was so strong. There were cigarette burns on the comforter and the, the worn out furniture had black edges all over its arms rests. And I can't go on. The furniture had tape over it to hold it together. And then I looked at the door and the door was missing the security strap. There was a lot of commotion going on in this back side of the area of the hotel all the way in the back area. There were a lot of people on the street, loud music playing. And there was a man walking, looking at me with his red card pulling it and just looking at me. And I looked at him and I closed the curtains, which actually were falling off a section. So I kind of, kind of snuck them just together. And I started looking and I'm like, Lord, why am I at such peace? I was like, why don't I just put the security lock on the door? And the moment I tried that, there was no security lock. So it was a different type of lifestyle I had not been used to. But I was there, fell asleep, woke up with, with sore throat because of the smoke in the room, woke up with stingy eyes and was concerned I would turn all red. But the night wasn't too bad. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and slept walked. And as I opened the curtain, I saw uh, that same man looking back, looking at me again with a small red children's carton walking to the parking lot like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. It was quiet and it seemed peaceful outside. Went back to bed. And then thoughts kept flooding in. And these thoughts wanted to complain. These thoughts wanted to do things that were not of God. They were saying, you deserve better. They can't treat you like this. You need a refund. And all that language came in. In the middle of all that, I heard a thought that came in, which was from the Holy Spirit saying, bless this place. And I was like, I'm supposed to bless this place. And the moment I started praying, because I am created for more, the moment I started for this place, 
and I prayed with blessings over it. I prayed for Jacob's ladder to be down there, which was a golden ladder, for angels to descend and ascend, for this place to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to step into life with so many homeless people or people living in these hotel suites in the back. When I started praying that, I saw a vision and big, huge cades opened up. It was a wooden gate, but it was beautiful, brand new, fresh, strong, and sturdy. And this double gate opened up and behind that was this beautiful field, a field of summer, a field of the woods, a field of just incredible beauty. And the moment that opened up, I woke up and prayed even more, fell asleep after that. And the next morning, the next morning, the first thing I experienced is after I used the bathroom and flushed the toilet, that it no longer flushed. And I actually started laughing. I can't even imagine because that was the tip of the iceberg. And it, I just started laughing. I called the hotel reception and nobody answered. Went to the reception. There was nobody there at eight o'clock in the morning. So I went back into the room and this is the moment I left all the windows and doors open. And my friend, this is the moment that when you pray, when you worship, when you connect with God, that the created for more is kicking in the moment you are ready to write a list of what should not have happened. And there was a man that peeked in my door because I had the door open to try to get the odor out a little bit of the smoke. And he asked, you have a cigarette? He was tall, was a handsome young man. And I just looked at him and I said, no, I don't, but can I pray for you? And I got closer to him and he said, yes, could you pray for me? And could you pray for my family? And so I did, I prayed for him and I prayed for his family. And after that, I looked at him and I said, do you know Jesus? And he said, I've heard about him. I said, do you know him? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, well, do you like to accept him in your life? He died for you on the cross. He died for you that you are more. He died for you to be part of a bigger life. And he said, yes. And we prayed a prayer together and we talked together. And I gave him my, one of my favorite Bibles. And at that moment, I realized because I chose to bless when Holy Spirit told me to bless and not curse. When that moment happened, that created the moment for me to be able to minister to this young man that ended up actually being homeless. God has created you too for more. Stay tuned. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how. TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. You are created for more and there are so often circumstances in life that you just don't see it coming. What stood out for me when I had that rough hotel was the preparation before that. Eight and a half hours of time of listening to some news, but praying over that news of worshiping God, listening to sermons, listening to some comedy. I was in that entire time present with where the Lord wanted me to be, which prepped me for what was coming. If I would not have done it that way, I would have complained, criticized, be angry, frustrated, and demanding. 
Instead, the Lord completely prepped me. I have to say, though, I have to give Holy Spirit credit. If he would not have said, bless this place in the middle of the night, it might have looked different. And it talks in Philippians at chapter 4, starting at verse 6, don't be pulled in different directions. I am like, wow, right? Or worried about the thing, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. I am like, this fits right in to those moments that you walk into situations that you're totally not expected to be. And as a matter of fact, this happened to Peter. Because Peter is here in, in Matthew, it talks about it. In Matthew 14, starting at verse 28, they have fed 5,000 people. An incredible miracle. They're on a lake now. They're hitting a storm. Storm, the waves are humongous, fear has set in, and at that moment they see a ghost, as they think, walking up, and there's a boat full of fearful people. And Jesus says, Calm, it's me, don't worry. I'm like, Okay, let me actually read that. Then Jesus said in verse 27, Be brave and don't be afraid. I am here. My, my great friend David told me, why were you not afraid in that hotel? And because he got to experience the same thing. And here the disciples are afraid. They are struggling. And Jesus says, be brave. Don't be afraid. And that moment, Peter, who was created for more, they actually all were, but he got it. Steps out of the boat and he does this. Peter shouts, Lord, if this is you, I am created for this, right? Then have me join you on the water. And he does. Come and join me, Jesus replied. So Peter stepped out onto the water and began to walk towards Jesus. But when he realized how high the waves were, he became frightened and started to sing, Save me, Lord! He cried out. This is this moment, my friend. That when you know you're created for more and you are and you start sinking in your circumstances and you cry out to Jesus, he will reach out to you and he will pull you out right there on the spot. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus immediately stretched out his hands and lifted him up. And this was what I want to share with you in verse 32. And the very moment they both stepped into the boat, Peter and Jesus, the raging wind ceased. Jesus took care of the atmosphere. He took charge. While I was in that hotel with these circumstances that are so different, there was a different feel the atmosphere after I blessed it the peace that it was there because of the angels that were all there took over and it changed everything it changed it completely so how do you do that how do you get there well in Philippians it says in the next section tell him every detail of your life then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ I prayed first I was connected with him then I arrived in a situation that I was like oh my but when I started blessing where I was at, instead of complaining and cursing it, that was the moment that I was able to hear Holy Spirit talk to me. And when I heard what was being said, my friend, that was the moment I was step into the more that was in the situation that God wanted to create at that moment. So I want you to envision right now. I want you to imagine the situation that you see right now. And as you see the moment of the issue of the problem that you're looking at, I'm asking you to imagine with your faith imagination right now what that looks like 
if God was there, and He is, if angels were all around it, I want you to look at what was not happening that could go wrong, but instead to look at what God wants to do through you that moment. Like Paul and Silas when they were thrown in prison innocently and they worshiped God and the jailer accepted Jesus. You know, everything changes that moment. And it says it so greatly here because the next section, which is so important for you to do, is so keep your thoughts continually, continually fixed on all that is authentic and real honorable and admirable. I needed a nudge from Holy Spirit that night when I was like, oh my, what just happened here? But it didn't end there because the next morning, the thought that came in was I hear Holy Spirit say, I want you to bless the housekeepers. 20, I heard the word 20 and I'm like, are you kidding me? I just had an incredible, not good experience expensive for what I got hotel for that night and now I have to give $20 to that housekeeper what are you talking about and I dismissed the thought I was like "Uh uh-uh not a no no I deserve better than that right but the thought came back but again what it says here so keep your thoughts continually fixed on All that is authentic and real, honorable, admirable, beautiful, respectful, pure, and holy, merciful, and kind. And then while I was bringing my luggage to the car, that's the moment I realized I was created for more. Because what happened next is I would not have planned, I would not have thought of, but it came. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss this. Peace is beautiful. However, finding peace is not always easy. But the result when you get there is life changing. Are you ready to dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger and live bigger? If you want to break free from dull Christianity and transform to a vibrant, active believer, what are you waiting for? Dare to Believe Big teaches you to believe like never before. It is time to grow, evolve, and expand. Discover four words that can transform your life. Are you ready to build a relationship with God? God has incredible plans for you. It is an exciting opportunity, and you can live each day with a high expectation of what God will do next. Don't wait any longer and sign up for your new free membership. Sign up now and get a free gift at daretobelievebig.com. So we're talking about when you think you have the right to complain or to be demanding and your circumstances are different, that those are often the key moments that God has created you for more. Your circumstances is not your identity. It's who God created you to be. That is your identity. So after a rough hotel night, after things not quite bay, after the shortest shower possible because the curtain was so yellow and kind of old, it looked like a shower that was 40 years old, basically the curtain. After all that, and I stepped out and I heard the Holy Spirit say, bless the housekeeper, 20. And I ignored it because I thought I had rights. So I walked to my car and now I saw two housekeepers. And I guess I heard 20. And I'm like, oh man, oh man. So I grabbed my purse and I walked into the housekeeper area. Now there were three. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We're kind of tight. Things went a little rough last week, you know, financially. And I walked in there and then the fourth one showed up and I was shocked. And I was like, Lord, I only heard 120. I'm only going to give one to one. That first one on the site. I'm, 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 it's going to be 20, not 80. And then I looked at them and I said, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you now? And before I prayed, and my friend, this is key for you right now. Because so often we're very, very willing to pray. But it's the action that Jesus Christ did first before the rest came. 
So I ended up getting into my wallet four $20 bills and I handed each of them one 20. The resentment was away and I looked at them and I said, can I pray for you? And the first thing they said was, who are you? Because they were not used to that. And I said, I am an apostle from Jesus Christ. And I've been told to give you $20 this morning. I just didn't expect four of, four of you. And I've been asked to pray for you. And in this hard circumstance for all four of them, they all asked, some not speaking English, they all asked, please pray for us to have a different job. And I said, this place is going to be blessed. This place has been prayed for. And I want you to know that angels are coming in and going out right here. And I prayed for them. And I handed them that money that I had given them. And I walked away. Now, my question to you right now is, do you think, do you think that they will remember that? Do you think that they knew that that was from God? I believe they do. So I want you to imagine in your circumstances yourself there and see how you can start blessing that place instead of making it hard. One way to do that is in Hebrews. And it says in Hebrews 11, starting at verse 1, Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. How do you do that? How do you make a reality of faith that you hope for? You start seeing it. God showed me the gates open up after my thoughts kept flooding into me. Floods that came of complaining in the middle of the night. But instead, God showed me I was created for more. And with that more, the gates opened up to this incredible, beautiful, peaceful field. And I spoke peace over that land. The atmosphere changed. And then when I walked to the front office and kept ringing the doorbell and just held my finger down till somebody showed up, I looked at the man, the owner, that finally came out and looked at him. I said, with a smile, I have some complaints about what is not happening here. But I want you to know, can I pray for your property right now? And what surprised me, he said, I accepted Jesus in my life years ago. I was baptized. And thank you so much for praying for this property. Thank you so much for speaking peace into this. Because we need it. And I was amazed. I was amazed. I saw a whole new set of eyes. A man that was helping homeless people in that area. Was it right what was there? No. But we got to pray for the property. We got to speak life into it. And because we prepped ourselves first, everything changed. So what are the three steps you can take? Number one, don't be pulled in different directions about worry, but pray, pray. Number two, tell Jesus every detail of what was going on. And trust me, they were going through my head. And then number three, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is offending, real and honorable. You can curse or you can bless. And this country today in so much turmoil, in so much fear, in so much struggle, I tell you my friend right now, and I'm imparting on you right now, what was imparted on the Philippian people. And this is what it says. I want to give you this impartation. So I want you to step up right now. Stand out of your seat. Take a deep breath in of the presence of God. Because you were created for that. And release it. And now, my friend, receive the impartation out of Philippians 1. May the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God, our wonderful Father, and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. 
I could just see that as an incredible invisible blanket just drop right there. And it wasn't just on one person, my friend. It was on the entire, entire, it was huge. It was everywhere. It was just everywhere. So I ask you right now, will you repeat these words after me? I receive the peace that is so much bigger as what I can see. Thank you, God, for giving me peace in the midst of my circumstances because I am created to be a champion. If you would love to talk with us or pray with us, I would love for you to do that. 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org and just know this. God loves you and so do I. When I told the young man, God loves you that accepted Jesus that day, he wants to do the same for you. All you have to do this right now, repeat to me, Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Dear Jesus, help me to step in for what I was created for. Dear Jesus, forgive me for the mistakes I have made. Thank you for dying on that cross and taking up my pain, my struggle, my worry, my frustration, and my sin, and rising from the dead so I can live. Call us. Know that you were created to be a champion. God loves you, and so do I. How do you step into loving who you are, loving your life, and stepping into in a way that you get up and look in that morning mirror and not see everything that's wrong with it? I believed it. it froze me. I was stuck and I believed it. I did not tell my mother. It was able to turn into something that wasn't necessarily favorable. What I'm hearing is you took control and nobody was going to mess with it because it wasn't going to happen to you again. Ooh.